Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to draw Wolverine for you uh, and use the uh, symmetry tool inside of Sketchbook Pro here. So I did a couple warm-ups. I'm going to show you these first. The beauty of this is it's really fast. So I've showed the symmetry tool on the channel uh, plenty of times. I, I did this first one and he looked a little too uh, somber, right? Like Wolverine <laughs> generally isn't that calm, uh, but it was a good warm-up. And I started to add shadows, and that's about when I was like, no, nah, let's go for something a little more fierce, something like that. Uh, and I know a lot of people look at the symmetry tool like it's cheating, but for me, if it's a straight-on shot, uh, I'm not even going to second-guess it. I would even flip, I would probably draw half of the artwork in the initial stage on paper and flip it anyways. Uh, so it's the same concept, but uh, it's really fast. So that's one of my favorite things about it. You can turn it on here. You can adjust it with the... Uh, you can see it, uh, the visibility there. You can lock and unlock it, move it around here. Uh, once you get it to where you want it, I suggest you do at least lock it. Uh, sometimes I'll take the visibility off, but I'm gonna leave it on for the start. And so like anything else, I'm gonna start with an initial sketch. And uh, I'm first just gonna get in, for a downward facing shot, I generally will go for like the inside plane change, or I've been doing this lately, I guess. The inside plane change of the face the downward slope of the eyes, something like that. But I'm, I'm kind of picturing the cheekbones and the way it connects down to the chin. Uh, I feel like this is important for me to get that into place first because uh, if I don't, I seem, seem to always try to squish the face in there. Uh, I am gonna purposely bring the eyes up a little higher. Now generally when you draw, draw a face on a downward tilt, the eyes are pretty low, but if the mouth is open, you gotta perceive that the jaw is dropping down right pivoting off the uh, you know the point below the ear there so I need to play around with this but I you know I can move all this around but one of the things that's really nice about this is just the ability to draw so much quicker uh, because it's drawn that other side and uh, a lot of times when I'm drawn this way I'll even go back and forth from side to side and I'll even retrace my own lines a little bit so that I feel like I'm getting a little bit of practice of a feeling of symmetry because I, I just have a really tough time with exact symmetry. Um, now I can just hear people chattering and you know saying, well, that's because you're using tools to cheat. Uh, but I don't think that's it. Like I've struggled and battled symmetry, uh, symmetrical drawing my whole life. And um, I continue to fight it, like, you know, do better. But it's just something that for whatever reason, my uh, my brain doesn't process as well as other things in my art. And we all have those, right? We all have our strengths and weaknesses. So uh, being aware of it, utilizing what tools you can to get past it, I don't see that as a bad thing. But uh, but also making the time to practice and strengthen it so that you know, we're not too entirely dependent on the tools. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of chisel out the nose a little bit. I'm trying to get this right before I go too far into it. Um, the trickiest part for me is always that snarl that he's got. It's like a tough thing to draw and get right, I think. I'm really trying to gauge and study the proportions of everything at this point. And that's why you see me doing a little bit of shape-based uh, drawing first. I really wish it didn't jump to that bigger eraser. I don't know why it does that, but if you know, comment in the section below for all of us to learn and grow together. I jump from software to software so much I... I tend to forget what some of the best ways to approach this stuff is. Uh, so trying to get those fangs in there, kind of overdrawing the teeth at first, and then I'll definitely uh, pull back from that because when you draw every tooth, it looks weird. Kind of like that. It's almost like he's pulling his bottom lip up. I think I like that expression. And get that skin that pulls from right here, get, bringing it down to the sides. I want the chin wider. And that goes up around to this bit of skin right there. At least that's the way I think it goes. Constantly changing the way that I draw faces, but that's that's where I'm at right now. And so at this point, I'll get in the mask. So I'll bring it from the sides of the nose over. A little point here. I like it to be a little bit wider than the, the skin fold so I can get that expression in there. So that's probably a little bit of personal preference. And then the mask goes from here, up and around. You can take it out as far as you 
want to. I've seen this stylized quite a bit. There's lots of different variations at this stage of the work. I like to bring this down, show a little bit of a point right there, and then bring it back over. Again, that's a little bit of a stylistic choice. A lot of these suit designs, the variations that you see, is that you know just a matter of what artist likes to do what, what they want to see in their own work. And then for that, uh, let's get the head in real quick. So for the downward uh, tilt, kind of draw through and make sure the head's at least as wide as the chin. Roundabout, I guess it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but close. The, probably the toughest thing in symmetrical drawing with these tools is the middles, where it connects there. You can get some weird occurrences there, so just be, uh, be aware of that. I feel like this point is too much. Just want a little subtle kind of point there. I might bring it out wider. So this is still a little bit rough, but then the neck, what I want to do here is really have them hunched over, lunged over a bit. Obviously pretty uh, pretty popular with Wolverine, right? That lunged over, ready to attack kind of pose. And bring the neck in like this, top of the chest. You could do the collarbones, but I don't know. Sometimes I think it's just better to do the chest muscles. You'll notice that people that are pretty, pretty bulky uh, muscle-wise, you see a little bit less of the collarbones. Uh, but also they're wearing a suit, so that's probably the main reason in comics you'll see a lot of people just not even draw collarbones And that's probably why it's probably the suit Design, but it's weird then you'll see people draw veins to the suit right and you definitely wouldn't see veins through a suit unless that material was super thin uh, I, I don't think you would but anyways Enough of that back to this. So yeah, so there's the shoulder pieces that he wears well on his uh is uh, blue and gold. Okay, so something like that. Yeah, so I feel like that's enough of the rough sketch. And you get like the wrinkles. Now this is the other thing. When you're using the symmetrical tool, you gotta be a little bit careful, right? Because if you stay in symmetry too long, you're gonna really drain a little bit of the life out, obviously, because we're not very symmetrical. You can but if you do it in the rough sketch stage, I think it's perfectly fine. And then what you could do is tone this back. This is probably where I would take the visibility off the symmetry tool. Uh, probably drop a layer over top. I can tighten up a bit now. I, I know what's in front of me. And then I can just take this and refine it a bit. Now I'm always torn when, uh, when drawing Wolverine as to whether or not to show the um, the wrinkles right here for the eyebrow, uh, the top eyelid, bottom eyelid, it seems like more often than not you'll see artists just fill it in, and I think that does make them look a bit more fierce, and it does coincide with the downward tilt of the head. So I'm just going to go with that. Not to mention it is easier, but I can always go back with a little bit of. Uh, uh, whiteout, which obviously is not whiteout because I'm using digital tools, but same concept. And I can draw on with white and uh, bring back some of those details. So for now, I'm just going to block that right in. And even with shadows, I don't want to be too symmetrical with the shadows. Now, obviously, I'm still working in symmetry here, but I'm just getting in areas that I feel like would be uh, have some base kind of symmetry to them But then I'll jump out of symmetry and refine stuff. I feel like that's too thin right there, but Let's see. Let's just put it into place for now Remember too, you can start pretty thin with your lines uh, And even if your lines are a little bit off You don't have to worry too much about it because if they're thin you can Kind of uh, push them back and forth not a big deal a little bit of curve around that chin right there. I think that'll make it look more dimensional. Uh, neat thing is too, you can still rotate if that makes you feel more comfortable around areas like this. It definitely does for me. Uh, I'd also avoid line weight at this stage as well because uh, you're going to push in that, that feeling of... Uh, or it's going to make it very evident that you were drawing in symmetry. 
Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm going to try to deceive my viewer. You know, like I want to use the effect and the power of this uh, symmetry tool. But other than the people watching this video, I really don't want them to know that I use symmetry. Is that bad? Is that, does that make me a bad person? I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Not really. I always look at art like it's you're basically a, a magician. And uh, it's not like a magician runs around telling everybody his secrets. Unless he's got a YouTube channel. Then, of course, yes, that's probably what he does. But yeah, there's a, a bit of illusion there that you want to maintain, and, and that's what makes it magical for people. And this is probably one of the trickiest parts, too. Because, like I said, meeting it to the middle is kind of awkward. And then just drawing a head or any rounded like object in symmetry feels a bit weird, but you get used to it. It's not, it's not that bad. Just keep practicing, you'll get there. All right, so the shoulder, remember you can throw lines if you want uh, smoother lines. A lot of people will ask me like, how do you get smooth lines? Uh, for one, I would say don't focus too much on smooth lines because they can be overrated in uh, a lot of art styles. I've seen plenty of art styles where they don't go for that and it looks gorgeous. And sometimes it makes me wonder if I focus a little too much on trying to get lines to look clean. Because there's part of a process where you're developing all this and it, it culminates together. So it's not like every line has to be this perfectly clean um, depiction of a certain area to make it work. And uh, so yeah, I, I definitely would say if you want cleaner lines, yes, throw the lines more, practice that, but don't, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it. And again, look at other styles, look at how some people use uh, some pretty energetic rough lines and make, make it look amazing. Yeah, it's not, there's a time and a place for it, I guess. So let's see here with the mouth. Now, this is, again, an area where I would really recommend pulling out a symmetry um, to, you know, to, to make it look more interesting. So, I guess the question is, do I want to do that now or wait? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one for me because we got to be careful that, yeah, you know what, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to toggle this off for now. So, I'm going to un unlock it, just turn it off. Make sure that it will jump back. Yep, it will. Cool. And then uh, what I could do is just, you know, raise a lip. It doesn't have to be very noticeable. It could be somewhat subtle because we're just pretty observant, even if we think we're not being observed. Like, we're really good at spotting asymmetrical, uh, asymmetrical, that's not a word, asymmetrical attributes. Um, it's really kind of a strange thing. I was just watching something and explained a little bit into that, and I can't remember what it was, but it, it was essentially saying that the reason we do that, uh, or part of the reason, is that we attribute uh, our reproduction to symmetry. That you know, uh, that somebody with symmetrical features is a stronger uh, mate, and that we do that subconsciously or even consciously, um, which is kind of crazy because I, I oftentimes see asymmetry as signs of beauty. But, um, but yeah, so it's like an instinctual thing that we do, and probably animals as well, I imagine. Uh, they attribute the symmetrical values, uh, and not just in the face, but posture, everything. So it's, it was kind of a, a neat little thing. I wish I could remember what I watched that said that, but, uh, and you know, whether or not it's entirely true, who knows, but I thought it was fun to watch nonetheless. Um, but with uh, drawing people, Nobody is truly symmetrical, so getting in here and, and uh, doing some of this out of symmetry is a good idea. We still have that rough sketch to give us that sense of balance anyway, so it's not going to be so entirely skewed. Where if I drew this face entirely with no guides, especially no grid, uh, I would definitely have a very skewed face to Wolverine here. Get some of these little shadows under the mask so it looks like it has more space on uh, dimension. And then also, like I said, I'm going to make sure to shadow oh, the dimple in the chin. I would do that out of symmetry too. Uh, I'm going to make sure to shadow out of symmetry, all the bigger shadows, uh, so that it has that, that uh, little bit of randomness to it. 
Same thing with the wrinkles here. We do all this out of symmetry. Because wrinkles you definitely, wrinkles and folds, you definitely do not want to do in symmetry mode. It just looks strange. There we go. It's going to be some... Well, actually, I don't know how much of this I'm in a shadow, so I might be wasting time doing the wrinkles there at this point. I think I'm going to put a lot of that in shadow. And I always kind of check it from a distance because uh, I tend to see other flaws that way. Okay, and I'm going to jump back into symmetry. Get some of the base shapes working. Neck muscles. And even these little folds here. So I'm going to do the outside. These would be the, the traps. I'm going to do these inside angles. Because uh, I kind of picture this being a mix of the neck muscles and the, uh, the suit. So I definitely want that to be out of symmetry as well. Trying to figure out how I want to light this as well. Oh, and then we've got these seam lines, which those could definitely be pretty symmetrical. I guess you could go either way with these, right? You could say, well, how good was his seamstress? Who, who made this costume? Who does make all these costumes? That's, that's what I want to know. They can't all be making them. I'll admit, that was one of my beefs with Spider-Man. Like, <laughs> especially the movie, like, it, or I guess it got it from the cop, but he's making his costume and it just, like, comes out amazing. And that was a bit far-fetched. I mean, I can, I can buy into the whole powers of a spider from the radioactive bite. That makes sense. But making your own costume and it looking stunning on the first couple tries? No. Not happening. Okay, so there's that. And then... You know, what I would do from here is just start to, to shadow. Obviously, the stippling for his face would be out of symmetry, things like that. And like I said, I'd take it out of symmetry here. And I would do this kind of zigzagging back and forth for these areas. You know, obviously, veins would be out of symmetry, things like that. Uh, the kind of chromey like effect that he has on his armor, that would definitely be more organic, randomized. Something like that, we'll glare up top maybe. Move this over. Okay, and then for the shadows on the face, let's see if I can get rid of this now. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty much there. And so for the shadows on the face, let me duplicate this one more time. I would say probably the highlights that bring out the the mask on the front of it. So let's see. Let's try this. to here, pretty big shadow under the eye, something like that, and then maybe a little off the side of the nose, the nostril, I'm trying to fill in these uh, lines as well so that I can fill this in quicker. Maybe a little bit of a line off the cheek here. Actually, I can fill that back in with white, so I'll do that. And then I need to make sure all this is connected. Okay, let's try to fill that in. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so now, uh, other side, 
And uh, so I'm kind of picturing that the light's hitting more on the front of the face, but then you know, I don't want these, again, I, like I mentioned, I don't want these to be symmetrical. So I'm gonna shift it a little bit, uh, but I do want the lights kind of on the front. It's, it's really just easier, I guess, but um, using some angles here to like get that in there. But I will admit that I, uh, I oftentimes do go a little too symmetrical with the way that I do this. And I really have to break that habit. And I'm, I am basically doing that. And then uh, I'm wondering if I can get like a little light source on one side of this. I don't know. The, the cowl, I don't know what this is called. His mask anyways. Let's just start here though. So we're all these connected. You know, because the other thing is this, is I can... Nope, I'm not filled. Oh, no. Whoopsie. Is that side? Neither side. Goodness. Mr. Reich. Yeah, that happens every now and then, folks. And then so what I'll do is I'll start drawing lines through the middle. Which makes it a little more confusing to look at. Let me tighten up on this a little bit. See if I can see where I'm messing up here. Here's fine, here's fine, there's fine, there's fine. There's not. It's like a where's Waldo. You guys are probably seeing it, right? Like, dude, it's, it's an opening right there. Why don't you see it? I'll tell you why, because my eyes are starting to go bad. Lovely. Time for a new script already. Okay, so let's just draw a line right through here. Fill it. Oh, that time I got it. And then you end up with this weird little artifact that you gotta go back and clean up, so be careful. And, oh, I got one right here, where I put that other line. Okay, so now, yeah, I think I like the glares on the front like that. It's just kind of typical, right? And then I've gotta fill in this back area, which I want some kind of line break there. Let me kind of test it out. I'll draw in a a line break right here. Test it on this side, see if I like it before I do the other side. Yeah, I think it kind of needs that because if not, it blends together too much. So same thing, add that over here. And fill. Okay. And then uh, you can just hold Alt, grab the background, the white, and then just jump in here with uh, the white, do all sorts of neat little things. And again, this kind of covers your tracks. This bit of rendering will make it start to look less symmetrical because you are drawing out a symmetry, right? So just kind of play around with this and you, know, you can always go back and forth and see what you like and what you don't. Try to bring out some of the thickness to this mask material. Okay, so let's get some of the other shadows in first. So he's starting to pull together though. And while I'm here at the section, I'll get the line weight on the noggin. So I really need to beef up the line weight here. Okay, so I'm gonna kick this into time lapse just because uh, the whole process took like an hour. So I don't wanna bore you with uh, everything in real time. Um, but again, the symmetry tool can be really helpful uh, for things like this. Character development sheets, I would definitely use it. So. A lot of times those are forward facing, not always, but uh, any of your forward facing shots, I would definitely recommend it. I think it just helps out dramatically. And so from this point forward, I'm pretty much working entirely out of symmetry because I want there to be a lot of variation. Like I said before, I want to kind of cover my tracks. Uh, and, and definitely with rendering, you don't want rendering to be symmetrical, or, or maybe you do. I, I wouldn't want to see that in my own work. 
uh, I, I do want it to look like uh, it was drawn uh, without the tool as much as possible. And then uh, the other thing is I typically uh, render more uh, clean than, than I did in this one, uh, but I purposely started to render a bit more sporadic and uh, less clean. Uh, I, I was just looking at the artwork and I felt like it looked overly digital. And so by being a little bit more careless with my line making uh, and a little bit more sporadic, I can get a little bit more of a visceral and gritty kind of feel, which I think is important for a character like Wolverine anyways. You know, like that's one of the things that makes him look neat uh, is that he has uh, a real visceral and kind of, uh, you know, crazy kind of vibe to the work. Uh, and I just started to think about styles that I like that do that, where they get very, uh, a lot of scratchy lines, uh, you know, even like how you do the, the grunge and the, the uh, stubble on his face, right? It's very gritty looking and, and sporadic. So uh, you can really have a lot of fun with that, with a character like this. Um, so yeah, so that's really it. Like I said, I really enjoy using this tool, so I figured I would share this process once again on the channel. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think as well as what you want to see in the future, so make sure to comment in the section below. And also, if you do like the stuff, make sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can keep making content for you. I always appreciate the support and more comic art on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.